All right, welcome back, Chaos Corner. This is um, a continuation of pumpkin colors, but also moving on to the painting of the jack-o'-lantern in my Halloween Village tutorials uh, line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the Ranchero color from Ceramic Coat and you don't have to have these colors. Um, you can you can use whatever colors you like. You can even make a non-orange jack-o'-lantern. Um, but what I'm going to do is my first color is going to be this ranchero orange, and I'm just going to paint the whole thing in this ranchero orange orangish red now for this whole project you're going to be using several colors several shades of orange Um, if you don't have a lot of shades of orange, you can mix your own colors. If you don't want to do several shades, you don't have to do several shades. You can paint this however you want. But if you need to make different variations of a color, of course, white and black are your best friends. And you can add different amounts to a base color of orange to get different shades of that orange. Um, you can also add brown to get a different shade. You can add red That'll make it more orangey red or red orange. You can add more yellow. That'll make it a more yellow orange. Just don't add blue. If you would like a video done on how to get different shades from basically the same color by only adding black, white, brown, or the base colors like red and yellow to make orange. If you would like a video on how to mix colors, comment down below so that I know that you would like A video on how to mix colors. Um, also while you're there please subscribe to the channel, like this video, give it a thumbs up, make a comment. Please make a comment. I thrive, I thrive on comments, any kind of feedback. Even if it's a negative one, even if you don't like it, go ahead and tell me you don't like it. Uh, the only thing that I ask is that you be polite about your dislike. Uh, negativity is not needed, but just because you don't like something doesn't necessarily mean it's negative. So, negative, I look at negative as more of uh, nasty responses, and I don't need that. Nobody needs that. And of course, I'm painting too much and I think I just got a fingerprint on the back side somewhere. Yep. Got a fingerprint. Now.
at this stage, some of you might be like, oh, I like how it looks, and you don't want to do anymore. That's fine. Stop when you think you're done. There is no wrong way to art. And you don't have to have a reason for liking it the way you like it. Sometimes painting something on over top of black, leaving it a little streaky, make, gives you that aesthetic that you're going for. And if that's what you're going for, then stop. The worst thing that you can do is compare your art to another artist because you are not them, they are not you. You both have different ways of doing things. So don't compare yourself to another artist. Because you can go down a slippery slope. Okay, I am done painting the Ranchero orange, but it needs to dry, so I'm going to let it sit and dry. And while I do that, I'm going to do a little bit of work on the base for the jack-o'-lantern. Now, this one I'm going to do mostly in, in browns and oranges. So this one I'm going to paint with a dark brown called Bittersweet Chocolate. And I'm going to paint everything in the Bittersweet Chocolate. And by the time I'm done doing this coat on here, I'll be able to go back to my jack o' lantern. If you're a kind of person that doesn't like to have to walk away from a project because it's drying, have a project or two sitting beside you. so that you can go to it while you're waiting for the other one to dry. Alright, I'm going to pause this video. You guys don't need to watch me paint brown all over everything. And we'll be back. Uh, I'll show you this painted in the brown. You can kind of see it, but I'll show it to you on all brown. Um, and then when I come back, after I show you this painted in brown, I will start back up on the jack o' lantern part. We'll be back soon. And I'm finished painting that bittersweet chocolate brown color on the base. So I'm going to set this aside to dry, and I'm going to pick up the torch with the jack lantern. And I realized I forgot to do something. When you get your ceramic bisque from whoever is making it for you, no matter how well they clean it, you want to take a towel or a um, wet wipe or something 
and you want to clean out the inside. You also want to clean off the outside because there's going to be dust on the outside as well. See, look at all that. And I made this. There's dust on the inside. And by doing that, you just ensure that your pieces are clean and will hold the paint beautifully. All right. So now I'm going to take some dark orange. going to paint some dark orange and I want to try something so before I get too far I'm going to put my paintbrush down and I'm going to wipe back just a little because I want to see the colors build up might not have let it dry long enough. I think I had a wet spot right there, so it wiped off both layers of color. Okay, we can blend it back later. Now, what I'm doing is I'm just painting on the color. I haven't watered the color down. It's not a special paint. And then I'm just kind of blotting it back off. Gonna leave that spot alone for just a little bit longer. Okay, I'm going to do just a little bit more. So you guys can see me doing it. But I'm not going to have you guys watch me do this whole thing like this. more so I'm, sh I'm going to show you around the face so you can see how it comes out. And if you're in a warmer climate and you find your paint's drying fast, you can add some water to it to keep it from drying too fast or just paint in smaller sections. Okay. 
Now for this little area right here, I'm going back with some Ranchero. I did not clean off my brush. I'm going to put the Ranchero back. But you got you got to do it carefully because you'll end up still seeing that bald spot because you put too much on. Sometimes color can erase color. There we go. All right, I'm going to let that dry. I'm not going to do anything else. When I come back, the rest of this will be painted with the white back, pat back method. Um, and we'll go to our next color. Okay, I'm back with the base. I'm going to cobblestone. And I've picked out four colors, but I think these two here, believe it or not, are going to end up looking very similar in color. So I'm going to not use this bright yellow color, which was apricot. And I think I'm going to use one of my oranges because when I paint this color and this color together side by side or close to each other, they look very similar in color. I'll show you. See how similar in color those two are? Okay, so I'm going to not use one of them and I'm just going to pick at random different spots to paint this yellow color. And I'm just going to do a small area of the colors so that you guys get the idea of what I'm doing. And then I'll go finish Now if you find yourself liking the dark brown color that you've painted the rocks as a color for one of the rocks, you could leave a couple of them in that dark brown color. And don't be afraid to have some of the same color side by side. Because when people are laying out the rocks, unless there's a super pattern that they have to follow, they don't really pay attention to what colors they're putting down. They just put down the ones that fit the best. So sometimes, a lot of times, on bridges and things of that nature, you'll see a lot of the same color of stone in the same area, and only a spattering of the bright color here and there. And... <laughs> I just put my paintbrush in the wrong color. Um, so a lot of times <clears throat> you'll see those same colors together and that's okay because that's natural. So 
so on the more typical stone colors I typically will paint more of the plain stone color now I think I'm gonna do I think I'm gonna do the carved pumpkin orange as my other color mm, nope I think that's a little too close to the yellow as well that's okay let's try dark orange that'll be better now remember with the way that I do the cobblestone it's okay that these colors are coming out super bright and almost cartoony because when you do the wash that will tone down that cartoony color and lend it, lend it to looking more natural and if you're a little bit afraid of the bold colors it's okay you could put it on and then wipe it back a little to help tone it down so that it's not so cartoony before you wash it. So there is the cobblestone on the pedestal in that area. I'm going to go finish cobblestoning this and I'll be back. Alright, <clears throat> I have my cobblestoning done. Now all that's left is to uh, black wash this but what I want to do real quick I did it to the front side I practiced <gasps> I did something not on camera oh no but what I did to the front was on the front in this part here okay that part there I dry brushed from the outside to the inside with staying darker at the edges okay just working my way from the outside edge in just to kind of give it some depth and this is how the other side looks okay it's just so that it's not so flat and plain and that was just a dry brushing and kind of just to give it a little bit of depth Okay, now for the black wash. Actually, I'm going to set this aside and I'm going to black wash this when I'm done with the jack o' lantern. The jack o' lantern 
I'm going to do one more orange color and that's going to be my spiced carrot color and this time I think I'm going to do just a little bit of dry brushing in the crevices we'll see we'll see what I decide I like I might end up using it more as a highlight on the edges or on the rims and going back in with a darker color on the ridges. that time of day in my room where my lighting gets a little bit rough. When you're doing something like a pumpkin or something that basically has a backside, what you can do if you're if you're worried about how something's gonna look, instead of starting on the face, you can try stuff out on the backside. 
to see how you like the technique or how you're going to work the technique for yourself. Now I'm going to use the carved pumpkin color which is like a lighter orangey brown Let's see if you can see if it'll focus on that color there we go that's a little better um, and I'm going to go in and I'm going to paint it on the inside of the nose, the eyes, and the mouth. And I might actually paint some of it on the actual inside. So that way when the light turns on, you're not seeing white inside the piece. If you get some on the outside, don't worry too much. You can either take a paper towel and wipe it away, a wet wipe and wipe it away, or you can leave it, or you can paint over it, whichever way you want to do it. Depends on the look that you want. Now this is a color that I'm going to have to do a couple of coats to get it to show properly over top of the black. And it's just little details like this that set the piece apart. gives it, oddly enough, a little look of reality. I'm going to have to let this dry so I can do a couple of coats. When I'm back with the coats all completely done, probably two or three coats because of the kind of paint that it is and the kind of color that I'm trying to cover with it, um, I'll be back with that. Actually, hold on. Since I'm going to have to wait for things to dry, I'm going to go ahead and black wash these cobbles real quick. And instead of pouring it on, I'm going to paint it on. I'm sorry if my voice cracks every now and then. I'm still recovering from a surgery that ended up hurting my throat because of the um, 
breathing tube that gets put down your throat from being put under. All the fun little things you learn. Alrighty then. <sighs> well, nobody says I'm perfect. <laughs> ah, ah. Alrighty. Now once this dries, I'll probably do some brown wash to it too, I think. Okay. So there it is black washed so far. All right, now it's a waiting game and a cleanup game. I'll see you guys back soon. And I'm back with the pumpkin. I'm gonna just paint the stem. I feel like I'm done with the face. Maybe I'll touch up the teeth just a little bit and then brown wash because I want to make it look a little bit more dingy because it is an outside um, town square thing. And I'm just using a nice dark green. This one is, I believe, hunter green. And I'm just going to paint it on. Real simple. I'm making sure I'm kind of pushing my paintbrush down on the actual pumpkin part because the stem isn't in just one spot, it kind of spreads out when you're looking at a pumpkin. So by letting your bristles kind of do that spreading out work for you, you don't have to worry too much. Okay, and the inside color was carved pumpkin, so I'm going to just get just a tiny little bit of that out. touch up these teeth because they kept giving me a hard time. There we go. Okay. And I'm going to do a little bit of brown wash on this. put the lid back on and let it pour. This will also f naturally find the indentions on the pumpkin. And kind of pull in that just a little bit. Oops. A 
we'll see how that goes. Might need to go ahead and do a little bit of the black wash too. Um, and I've realized I don't like my base being just this flat brown. So I'm going to take some gray and I'm going to kind of sponge on. But I don't really have a sponge, so I'm going to take a paper towel and I'm going to scrunch it up. Here, let me get to this on. Remember to do this on camera. I'm just kind of bunching it up so that I get more interesting patterns. Okay. And then I'm going to dunk the paper towel in and I'm just going to go along and sponge along the edge. You want to be careful and not have too much paint on your towel or your sponge, whichever you are using. So when you dunk it in the paint, you want to kind of pat it off, kind of like you were doing for dry brushing. And then lightly tap it along the area that you want. Oh my goodness, let's move this camera just a little bit. Every time I go to pick it up and bring it to where I can see it, I'm taking it off of the, the film. So, I got one little spot left. There we go. And then I'm going to do the same thing along the edge up here. And this gives it a little bit of a texture on that flat surface so it looks a little bit more realistic and I want to do some brown wash wash a little, a little, a little. some brown washing on the cobble area because I don't like it just with the black wash, so. Okay, so there is the brown wash done on that. I've got to let it dry so I can see if I like it. I've sponged it to make it look a little bit more textured and stone-like instead of just the brown on the edges. 
some of my brown wash was getting down on the pedestal area. I don't want that, so I'm going to just go pat it off. There we go. That's a little better. Yep. There we go. Hmm. switch my hands. Now I don't want these streaks to stay like that so I'm just going to kind of go with a wet brush and kind of move this around a little bit. Take some of it off in the areas that I don't want it staying. Put it into areas that I do want it staying. And this is just you just are kind of eyeballing it. There's no rhyme or reason. I uh, just putting it how I like it looking. And then if you get it too dark in some places and you feel like maybe the cheeks need to be a little bit more rosy, <laughs> so, to, so to speak, you can go back in and dry brush some um, more orange into that area. I felt like it was too dark over here, so I took some from here and put it up over here. And it's still a little too dark in this area, so I'm going back with some just some water and kind of moving it around. And then if it's still a little bit too dark you can blot it in the areas that you want to take more off. See? Okay. There we go. I like that. Now I'm just going to let that all dry. Next time you guys see this pumpkin, it will be put together with the light threaded through and a flickering light bulb on the inside. Unless I decide to do something else to it. <laughs> There we go. Alright, that is the pumpkin from Courthouse Square, or Town Square. That will be in the Town Square. And that is all for this particular episode, so we'll catch you on the next one. Make sure you hit like and subscribe. Hit that bell button to get notified anytime I do more videos and we'll catch you on the next one.